so that it doesn't uh, leak. <laughs> so anyway, so that's it right now. Um, I'm gonna probably do a little test fitting with this here in a, in a little bit. And I'm gonna do some, I haven't done the cabling that's coming to this yet. Uh, well, not officially. Um, I have one run that I did from the back of the truck that's already in the cab, but I have the middle of the truck and then the, the front panel cab part of the truck wiring I still need to bring in here. So I'll probably be doing that today and taking this guy and fit him in and doing some of the initial connections down here on the uh, terminal boards and I have to do a couple little connections up here for the switches and what have you. So anyway, so this is where we're at right now for the electrical and um, we'll just keep moving along. Oh, by the way, for, for those that don't know, ah, this is my lighting panel. So this will control like I told you, the very the six different lighting options I have on the truck. I have uh, front spotlights, front um, wide beam lights in the center of the truck. I'm going to have uh, work lights, convoy light, and then I have the cargo bed. It's going to have uh, a circuit for the inside. Once it's covered with the tarp and bows, I'll have a light for the or lights for the inside, and then I have a cargo area light, like you'd have in the back of your pickup truck facing into your bed. I'll have that, and then I have my rear reverse or backup lights. And uh, there's different colors represented here that you can't really see. I decided to break out the front in blue, so blue represents the front. I have an orange one for the convoy light. I have green for the cargo lights, one and two, and then red for the, uh, the backup lights. So that way I have it, I can visually see what it is um, as, as well as it actually being lit. And then I decided to do the racing style switches. Um, always wanted to put that in a car or a truck that I had. I decided now is the time to do it. So what's really nice about these is when you flip them on, uh, it's on, but all you have to do to turn them off is just flip it down it's spring-loaded and it automatically turns it off so that's going to be sitting uh, like this yeah, yeah. Let me do that. underneath the panel right about where the front differential um, lock engage and disengage switch is I'm going to move that and this is going to go pretty much right about in that area it's going to be mounted up underneath the dash um, and that way it's out of the way yet I can still get to it so but it will be sitting like that and then the back of it looks like this. It was a tight fit, I'll tell you, to get everything in here. You can see uh, that the switches themselves are actually a little bit off instead of being perfectly vertical. And that was because it was so tight fitting in the switches that I uh, had to be off a little bit as I did it to make them actually be able to fit. And the last one actually has to be a different size because the larger one here doesn't fit, so I got a smaller one there. To actually make it in the corner so I'll have my wiring connected to the switches and the lights uh, come off here and then going back to this box so when I flip that switch that light comes on and the wire coming back here will throw a relay let's just say it's this first relay here and then the front uh, spotlights are connected to this exposed lug right here because I only need one wire because it's grounded at the uh, at the lights themselves. So positive 24 volts comes off of this relay once it's flipped, goes up to the lights and bingo, you have lights. So it's a lot of work to do this, but um, breaking it out into six different circuits, if I have any troubleshooting I need to do, um, makes it way, way easier than just randomly just hooking it up. Second, I'll know exactly what my circuits are and what they do um, and also uh, this gives me a chance to add as I go along later without really too much work because I'm already doing it up front. These two relays I'm, are dedicated as spares right now. So if I need to add anything, I'm already wired, ready to go for adding it. So it'll be a lot easier down the road. And having everything in one spot as far as uh, like a junction point and servicing makes it really, uh, makes it nice down the road again to... Uh, work on the system or add to it or make changes whatever I can do it all from this box instead of having to 
dig through a rat's nest that's underneath the front panel. So anyway, so there it is. And uh, like I said, I'm gonna be moving forward. Uh, there's still a lot more to do here and uh, we'll just see how it keeps going. Okay, well, so I was gonna go ahead and uh, show you real quick how I'm gonna go ahead and, and wire up the uh, light bar or the light control switches for uh, for the cab. And uh, this is, again, this is the back. And now that's the front of how we're gonna control the switches. So I'm just starting with the first one. I took it out because I have to be able to get to everything. So one of the most important things, of course, is, you know, what's the position of the, sh of the switch either on or off. So using your multimeter and put it on, um, I guess they call it continuous, to go ahead and find out uh, whether the switch is, you know, whatever your circuit that you're on is, uh, is closed or open. So you do that. I got that on the switch here. Let me go ahead and get set up a little better here. All right. So what I did is I labeled this, the switch right there on or off. That way I know when I'm hooking up my wiring that I'm going to be doing it properly as far as uh, which way the wires need to route. So when, I'm, when you have it hooked up like I do right now to the multimeter, when you, when you go ahead and you throw the switch, it, the multimeter makes a little noise, you'll hear that. switch on it makes noise with the switch off it stops so that way you know which position the ship the switch needs to be not only as you mount it in but also how you're gonna go ahead and wire it so um, and that's true for anything you're doing there we go so now that I know this what's on or off I'll go ahead and do my wiring now the way I'm doing this is the wiring is gonna come into the switch first and then when I put the switch on, the top wire here will connect to the back one of these. And then the wiring from this will go back to the to the to where the relays are. And now that, that'll go ahead and throw the relay so that the lighting can work. So it's just I'm routing power through the switch to the light and then back to the relay. So that's how that's gonna go ahead and work. And I'll be using heat shrink to cover the terminals, make sure that they, so they don't short out back here. And um, I think that's it. So that's kind of um, the way that the, the light uh, panel is going to be working. So hopefully that works for you. Uh, it should work for me. And uh, that's it. So let's get started. So the way I decided I'm going to go ahead and do this, as far as the connections here at the uh, light control panel, is uh, I'll explain what, what's going on here. So I have my switch here, and on the other side I had wrote on and off, but I didn't realize if you flip it over, the, it actually says off and on on that side, uh, so I didn't have to write on that. So. Uh, but I am going to go ahead and still write on it and write in and out. So what I mean by in is that the wiring that's coming from the 24 volt battery source is going to come to the in part of this. And then it's going to route out to the light and then goes back to the relay. So I actually called it in and out. So, and that's what we have going on here. So, uh, I have, a uh, power coming in and then it's going to come out and it's going to come out on that terminal with this uh, ring connector is what they call that That's uh, that I have here that goes to the red wire and uh, I have that connected to the Presto light wire, it's 14 gauge soldered it here so that goes and that feeds the light that's at the light panel here so it's going to plug into that and then this is this is going back to the relay so this is going back to the uh, 
power distribution box is what we'll call that. Uh, so this end will be the end that actually ends up connecting to the to the back part of the relay that activates the relay. So like I said, so recapping, power comes in, comes out on this side through this, connects to the light, and then goes back out to the power distribution box. So that's how I do it. Now I, I'm soldering it here and then I'm gonna shrink to it. That's what this is right here. I'm gonna slide that right over. Well, whatever. Slide it over, there we go. It's gonna look like that. There we go. Okay, so I'll heat shrink that so it'll be nice and uh, tidy there. And then go back. If I didn't wanna solder it there, that would have been fine. What I could have done is on the back of the wire here, I could have just doubled them up right there and it still would have done the same thing. But because uh, I built up uh, this thing the other day that holds the wire and I have my soldering station, uh, I decided that, you know, look, I'll spend a couple extra minutes and actually connect it up this way and uh, it'll be a little bit cleaner and uh, I can use this stuff that I made up the other day. So that's why I'm doing that. But you don't necessarily have to do it this way. Like I said, you could have connected the red wire back here if you wanted to with this by doubling up on it it would have done the same thing so uh, that's the way we're going to end up doing it and then like i said i'll do that for each one of these guys and uh, then then i'll take that put that in the truck and start connecting up the wiring to that so that's where we're at for that and so i gotta get busy i got lots of work to do